Hi there, Mr. Sutton here with the Pre-Cal Honors 2-3 Part 1 Homework Solutions on Rational Roots Theorem. For this one, we're trying to find complex zeros of this polynomial, and we're given that 3 is one of the roots already. So since they're giving us that, we're going to go ahead and plug that in with synthetic division, and hope, hopefully we can use that to break this down a little bit further. So writing out my coefficients, I've got 1, negative 1 for the negative x squared, negative 1 for the negative x, and negative 15, and a box number of 3. So we got that 1 coming down, times 3 gives me 3, uh, plus negative 1 gives me 2, 3 times 2 gives me 6 up here, plus negative 1 is 5, times 3 is 15, plus negative 15 is 0. So I can factor this polynomial into x minus 3 times my quotient of x squared plus 2x plus 5. And at this point, uh, I would factor this if I could. It looks like I should be able to factor it. But if we think about this, numbers that multiply to 5 and add up to 2, uh, there are no such numbers that are, are at least nice numbers that we can think of. Um, so we're going to go to quadratic formula or completing the square for this. I'll use quadratic formula. So that's going to be uh, negative b, so that's negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 squared, that's b squared, minus 4ac, so that's going to be minus 4 times the a value 1, times the c value 5, all over 2 times my a value of 1. So simplifying this a bit, we've got negative 2, plus or minus the square root of, this is going to be 4 minus 20, uh, so that's negative 16 in there, and then we have 2 in the denominator. Negative 16 can get simplified to, uh, let's see, take out an i, square root of 16, that's 4i. So my answer is then, I've got x equals 3, and I've also, if I, got, if I simplify this, I've got negative 1 plus or minus 2i. For number 2, we're trying to find the complex zeros of this function here. Let's start by generating, a, generating our PRR list, possible rational roots. So that would be factors of 40 divided by factors of the lead coefficient of 1. Um, since we're dividing by 1, we don't have to worry about the lead coefficient. So factors of 40 then, we've got 1, 2, 4, 5, 8 goes into 40. And now we're coming back around here. We've got 4 times 10, 2 times 20, and then 1 times 40. So these are all the numbers we might have to test on our calculator. I'm going to plug this in my calculator now and see which one of these, if any, is going to give me a zero. So I've entered this function under y equals, and there's the beginning of the function there. I've set my table set for ask independent, or off, rather. Um, my independent variable is, come on, there we go, set for ask. And then going to table, so that'll be uh, shift graph. I'm going to start entering some values. So 1, that doesn't work. Negative 1 does not give me a 0. On my list now, I've also got 2 and negative 2. So 2 doesn't work. Negative 2, that works. All right, so we tried a bunch of things. And negative 2 was the first number that worked. So now I'm going to use synthetic division with negative 2 as my box number on the original function. Coefficients of the original, we've got 1 negative 7, 2, and 40, box number of negative 2. Let's bring down the 1, times negative 2 is negative 2, plus negative 7 is negative 9, times negative 2 is 18, plus 2 is 20, times negative 2 is negative 40, and that'll add up to 0, like we hoped it would. So I can factor this into x plus 2, because negative 2 is the box number, so x plus 2 is the factor, and then we'll use the uh, bottom row here for the coefficients of our quotient. So this is 1x squared minus 9x plus 20. Let's try factoring this. Two numbers that multiply to 20 and add up to negative 9, well, that would be negative 4 and negative 5. So going through here, my zeros are going to be negative 2, positive 4, and positive 5. For number 3, we're trying to find the complex zeros for this polynomial function. Let's start by getting our possible rational roots. That will be factors of the constant, 2, over the lead coefficient, 6. Um, so factors of 2, we've got 1 and 2. 
Factors of six, we've got one, two, three, and six. So now we've got combinations of these. We have one and two over one, which is just one and two. We have one half, two over two is just one. We have one third, two thirds. We have one sixth, and two over six is just one third. So these are all the unique roots that we have here if we reduce things. Let's go ahead now and start plugging these in the function in the calculator. So I've entered all that in my y equals, and if I go to my table set here, notice I've turned independent to ask, so that when I go to my table, I can just enter all the x values I want. So let's start with 1. That doesn't work. Negative 1. That doesn't give me a 0. Positive 2. Doesn't work. And negative 2 is also on my list. It's plus or minus all those. That gives me 0. So we tried all these ones that didn't work. The only one I care about is f of negative 2, because that gives me a 0 when I plug it in here. Uh, that means if I divide synthetically with negative 2 as my box number, I should get a remainder of 0. So let's go ahead and do that so we can get the quotient. So our coefficients, we've got 6, 11, negative 3, and negative 2. Box number is negative 2. Let's bring down that 6 to start us off. Times negative 2 gives me negative 12. Plus 11 is negative 1 times negative 2 is 2, plus negative 3 is still negative 1, times negative 2 is positive 2, and there we have it, the 0 for the remainder. Um, so this means that we can factor the original into x plus 2 times the quotient, which will be 6x squared minus x minus 1. Now we could use quadratic formula here. It might be factorable, um, so that's really up to you which way you want to go. It turns out we can factor this. Um, so if you split this up into 6x and x, that's not going to give you this 1 in the middle when you do the outers and the inners. But if we use 2x and 3x, that'll help us out. Um, so specifically, if we have 2x minus 1 and 3x plus 1, the outers gives us 2x, the inners gives us negative 3x. That adds up to negative 1x. So there we are. Going through now, we've got negative 2. This will be plus 1 over 2. That's 1 half. This will be minus 1 divided by 3, so negative 1 third. And if you look at these, these are some weird answers here, but they actually are all on our rational roots list. For number 1, we're trying to find the complex roots of this function here. Let's start by getting our list of possible rational roots. So that's factors of 2 over factors of 1. Um, factors of 2, we've got 1 and 2, plus or minus those. And then dividing those by 1 is not going to make any difference. So we have plus or minus 1 and 2. All right, let's put this in our calculator and start testing these until we get a 0. So here we go. I've entered this in my y equals. And I'm just going to go to table set and make sure that my independent variable is on ask. Then I'm going to table. And let's just start testing numbers. So I'll test 1 first and then negative 1. So here's 1. That doesn't give me what I want. Let's see if negative 1 does the job. Oh, there we go. Negative 1 gives me a 0. So 1 didn't work. Negative 1 did. So let's plug negative 1 in now using synthetic division so we can get the quotient from this. I have coefficients of 1, 0 because we're missing an x squared, negative 3, and negative 2. Box number will be the negative 1 that we know is going to give us a 0. Bringing down the 1 times negative 1 gives us negative 1, plus 0 is negative 1, times negative 1 is 1, plus negative 3 is negative 2, times negative 1 is 2, plus negative 2 is 0. So we can split this up into x plus 1, because our box number was negative 1, and then the quotient will be 1x squared minus x minus 2, using the coefficients of our bottom row here. All right. So this next one, it looks like we might be able to factor this. Two things that multiply to negative 2 and add up to negative 1. That would be positive 1 and negative 2. So going through then, we have x equals negative 1 for these two parentheses here, and also positive 2.